Hello everyone, and welcome to Sunday School this week. Today we're going to have a look at the stories of the plagues and Passover. This week you're also going to see Tina and Kate as they walk and talk you through some of the activities that go along with this story. But first, I'm going to introduce you to one of my friends. He's new to the area, but he does know his stuff. So everyone, I would like you to say hello to Mikey. Oh, Mikey? He's not here yet. I reckon we need to try to give him a call. So after three, can you shout Mikey with me? Ready? One, two, three, Mikey! Oh, hello, Joel. I'm sorry to be late, but my mum got stuck in traffic driving me here today. Look, she even got me a packed lunch. I love it. Oh, that's very nice of her, Mikey, and thank you for coming. Have you got anything nice for your lunch? Ooh, yes. I always have a nice lunch when my mum makes it. But today, I have some cooked lamb in a sandwich from last night's dinner, which is similar to what the Israelites had in today's story. Yes, that's right. Well, Mikey, are you all right if I leave you? Because you're making me feel really hungry, and I haven't had my lunch yet. Is that all right? Cool. Well, see you later. Right. Um, hello, everyone. And hello, mums and dads. You probably saw me on Sunday when I was asked to lead the prayers. So I'm new to this church, and I can sometimes be a bit... Whoa, whoa! Oops. Yes, a bit clumsy. But I hope this story goes well, but we shall see. I would like you all to search right back, way, way back into your minds from Exodus times, when you were best friends with... Oh, wait. You weren't best friends with Moses. <laughs> My bad. I would like you all to close your eyes and imagine that you were there in the time of Moses. And by this point, we would have already experienced all the plagues. So first we had the River Nile turning to blood, but Pharaoh didn't believe it was from God because his trusted advisors did the same thing with a magic trick. The next plague was frogs. Thousands upon thousands of frogs covered the land and they were everywhere and all over everyone. Yuck! They were even in your beds. Ew! The next two plagues were sent by God, and they were the lice and flies. The lice were on everyone, and the animals. And when the flies came, they took over every surface they could, including the floors. The Pharaoh's magicians, they tried to recreate this plague, but they couldn't. Could you imagine being in Egypt and having flies all over you? How horrible must that have been? The next plague was the disease of the animals, and this meant they had become sick, and they would have died so they couldn't be kept or eaten. After that, there was a plague of unhealable boils and a plague of hail and fire. These plagues kept coming to the people of Egypt because Pharaoh wouldn't let his people go, as Moses had asked. The next plague was the plague of locusts, and they came to destroy anything that was left in the land after the previous plagues. Egypt was ruined! Wow, there is so many, and we still have two left to talk about. The next plague was the plague of darkness over Egypt. And it was dark for three days. No sunlight was seen by any of the Egyptians or Israelites for three days. And Pharaoh still didn't learn his lesson. And he would not let God's people go. This was the final straw for God, and so he came up with the final plague, which was the Passover. This was the first Passover and the reason why Passover is celebrated today. God told Moses that this would be the first day of the month and that all the Israelites had to follow this. On the 10th day of the month, they had to go get a year-old lamb. They had to keep it for four days until the 14th. On that day, they would have to kill the lamb, roast it, and eat it. For this is what God had told them to do. And with some of the blood from the lamb, they must paint it on the door frames of their houses so... God would know that they are the Israelites, and these are their houses. On the night of the 14th, the Lord passed through Egypt and killed the firstborn of all the animals and the Egyptian people. This was the first Passover, and the descendants of the first groups of people were taught to celebrate this with a feast to the Lord and to remember what he had done. Thank you very much for listening to my story and making me feel so welcome. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your Sunday school. And now I'm going to go eat my sandwich. Mmm, tasty. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. 
And Joel, thank you so much for telling us the story of the plagues and the first Passover. Now, in that story, God told the people how to prepare for the Passover. But he also said they would celebrate the special meal for generations so that they could remember what God had done for them. So sometimes we have special meals, don't we? Um, at Christmas and for our birthdays. And other times, different families will have special meals that they like to celebrate together. Next time I can get all of my family back together, it doesn't matter what time of year it is, we're gonna have a Christmas meal and celebrate that we're back together and God has cared for us. So I wonder if you might like to plan a family meal together. It could be something really simple or it could be something really special. And as you have your meal, think about God's goodness. Now Jesus celebrated the Passover because of he was Jewish. And a very special time he celebrated it is when we call it the Last Supper. It was when he was with his disciples and he got them together and he showed them exactly what it meant that he was going to die. And he celebrated by breaking bread with them and drinking wine. And we remember that special meal as Christians when we celebrate communion. So I was thinking today, what would my special meal be? And um, there is one thing I love and it got delivered today and that is this bread. I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. It's a what they call a sourdough loaf and it's my favourite. And we have one delivered every Thursday and it's my special meal. So I thought I would put myself together a very simple special meal and I will share it with you by showing you what it means to me. The first thing I've got is a drink. And in my jug, as I pour my drink, uh, it may look like something very exciting. It's actually a drink called hibiscus. It's blackcurrant and hibiscus. You might do this if you have squash or even water. And when you do it, you could think about how in our communion meal, we celebrate as Jesus' blood is shown by the wine that we pour. We think about God's goodness to us and what that means to us. So perhaps when you're planning your special meal and when you have your drink, you could talk about just how much God has done for us. So I'm going to have a sip of my special drink now. Mm. Now in the Passover meal, they had lamb to eat. And many families, Christian families as well, celebrate the Passover by having a special meal to remember that that last supper that Jesus had. And before that, in Jewish houses where they celebrate Passover, they have a special plate. And in the craft materials we sent out to mum and dad, there is a picture of that plate. You could have a look at that and talk about that together. So it's bread time now. Now, when I have really nice bread like this, it often makes me think about the communion bread that we share and that Jesus said, that bread was to represent his body being broken. But also, for me, it's something to be thankful for. Thank, something to say to God, um, thank you that I have my food. Thank you that it's something so nice. And when my family are here, or David's here to share it with me, thank you that I've got them to share it with. So, my bread, I'm gonna put some lovely butter on. Now, this is really yummy butter. I chose this for my special meal because this butter comes from France, which is a place I like to go to on holiday. And again, it tastes lovely. And I'm thankful to God for all the different tastes of all the food we have, but also that different things can remind us of different times in our lives. It may be that you've got something special that a special family member makes for you. And by eating that, you might remember them. 
And so the Passover was meant to remind people, the Passover meal was meant to remind people that God had done something amazing, that he had rescued them. And when we join together in a communion meal, it's a reminder that God has done something really special for us. Because by Jesus shedding his blood and by his body being broken, it, he gave us a chance of a new life, a really good life with a God who cares for us. So I am going to enjoy my meal now and I'm going to put some jam on my very special bread and I am going to be especially thankful that even in these times when we're in lockdown and we're at home that God can be close to us and we can be close to him by thinking about things to be thankful for and thinking about what he's done. So enjoy your time with your family. Even if you don't have time to plan a very special meal today, when you eat together, take a bit of time to think about all the good things God's given you and think about really how lucky we are. I'll see you next week. Bye bye for now. Good morning, adventurers and explorers children. How are you today? I hope you're all well. So we today are thinking about our active prayer activity. Now for this, you need post-it notes, you need some blue tack, and you need the Promises of God sheet that I prepared for you and sent out in an email with all of Tina's emails. So here we go. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write on the post-it notes um, feelings that God might have towards you. So I've written patient, loving, forgiving, and I've written a few more. And also from your promises sheet, if you want to write some promises on your post-it note, I've written on mine, come to me or you who are tired and have heavy loads and I will give you rest. And then what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to stick your post-it notes around the door. And the idea is that you leave these on during the week and that every time you or one of your family members goes through the door, you then remember how God feels about you and his promises towards you. Now, how does this link to our story? In our story, we talked about how um, they put blood on the door frames to protect all the firstborn babies. And so that's how it links to our story today. So that's your challenge. Your challenge individually as a family, look the promises up in the Bible, use some of mine that I've given you and enjoy the activity. Okay, we are going to finish with a prayer. So let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for the story of Passover, the night when you led your people out of slavery into Egypt. We thank you that you still protect and save us today. We thank you for Jesus, who was led like an innocent lamb to death for us. We thank you that because Jesus' blood was shed, our sins can be forgiven and we will not be punished but you, but we will be your friends forever. We pray for all our friends and family who don't yet, don't yet know you as their friend, that they would respond to the good news about Jesus. Amen. So enjoy the activity and I'll see you next week.